Hi folks, it's Kyle here. Sorry, I wanted to start this at 7 o'clock, but I had some tactical problems with my phone. And I wouldn't be great with mobile phones uh, and the technology of it all. So hopefully you can see me clear enough anyway. I couldn't get the, the, the screen to work, but hopefully you see me clearly. I devil's busy. He doesn't like messages being preached. And uh, so we talked last time about Elijah. I'm, I'm working my way. Just These are basic studies I'm doing. I'm not going into depth with these studies. They're basic studies to show you through the life of Elijah what God can do in your life and what God can do in my life. Friend, there's nothing impossible with God. He can do anything. And you know something? He says, he says to you as a child of God, and he says to me as a child of God, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Now, just a recap from the last time I was talking part one. Elijah comes on the scene. With, we, we don't hear about him beforehand. He just, he's there. He's on the scene. He's with Ahab. He tells Ahab in uh, cha uh, First Kings chapter 17, he tells uh, uh, um, Ahab, he says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain these days, but according to my word. And then the next verse says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by, by the brook of Cherith that is before Jordan. So we finished off that the brook had dried up. The brook had dried up. So we're going to go, we're going to, go to verse 7. So it's First Kings chapter 17, verse 7. And we're going to look at this part tonight. Okay. I want you to realize something. God is building Elijah up for a showdown. A showdown. Where Almighty God Jehovah is shown as the only true God, but He is bringing this man through different experiences uh, to see His obedience, to test them, to train him, and all of that, because Car the Mount Carmel is coming and he's, he's preparing him for it. So the brook is dried up. He had been he had been by the brook. We're not sure just how long he was there by the brook, but the brook dried up anyway with the drought. The brick, the brick right up. Now, the first thing I want to say is this here. Did God, has God failed Elijah then? No, God has not failed Elijah. God hasn't failed Elijah. Uh, basically, God's shown Elijah that he's not going to leave him and he's not going to forsake him. Let's, let's go through this by chapter by chapter, okay? And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him saying, now, I want you to I want you to note what 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 the Lord commands him to do. Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now let's just stop there. If you had been listening uh, my my first part of this here uh, carefully, you would you would know that Ahab was king and queen was was Jezebel. Was Jezebel. Now Jezebel was a Zidonian witch. Now the Lord actually sent that. Sorry I'm going to knock my phone to silent here. Because this my phone never stops. Bear with me. Hope you all see me. Thank you. Sorry about that. So the Lord sends him from the brook of Cherith. In the Gentile territory. In fact. she sent this, the, the, the Lord sends him to a place called Zarephath. Right. Which is very, very close to really where uh, um, where the headquarters of Baal is. This is massive Baal worship, and here God sends this prophet to go there and for a widow to look after him. You would think that it would be the other way about, but no. This is the, the, this was the command of the Lord. He had sent them to Zarephath, and he had sent them there uh, to preserve him. So he says, Arise and get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a woman, a widow woman, uh, there to sustain thee. You know, friends, in droughts, at, at in biblical times, and even up to now, droughts in these countries, the first, unfortunately, to die are widows, because there's no money coming in. And as we see now in the story, so he arose and went to Zarephath. So there's obedience. Friends, sometimes when the brook dries up, 
God wants to send you somewhere else or God wants to do something else with you. And really, I'm sure Elijah looked at this on, on the surface and said, Lord, I, I trust you here and I'm going, I'm going to obey your commandment. But goodness, this is a strange one. And that's what, but listen, God does these things for an ultimate purpose. He is building a servant for Carmel, Mount Carmel. And friends, in your own life, what I would say is this here, in your own life, if he, if, if he is lead, leading you into ways that you sort of are saying, I don't know where this is going, Lord. You just trust the Lord. He's got the whole thing in control. Elijah did that and he went, uh, he went a good 80 or 90 miles from his hometown. He went there. He went there. Uh, uh, and that's, that's what, where the Lord had commanded the widow to sustain and look after him. So verse 10 said, So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, a, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. So the wee pet was going to get him the water. But then he shouts another wee, another wee request. He says, and, and uh, he says there just that, and as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. He, he needed food. So he shouts out, he gets, he asks for a wee drink of water. She's going to get the drink of water. And then he says, Look, I need a wee bit of food. I need a wee bit of food. But this lady is in a dilemma. This widow is in a dilemma. But let's see, where do you see how the power of God moves here? God is wonderful, friends. Will you, will you, will you see how he, he, he works a fantastic miracle here? Uh, and she said, now, I want you to note something here. As thy God liveth. Now, this you see this line. I spent three hours on this line. Some theologians believe that she was a believer. She, yes, she was a Gentile, but she was a believer of the God of, of the Hebrews, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And some don't. I personally don't because she, he, he says there and she said as the Lord thy God, not the Lord my God, but as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in, in, in a cruise. And behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Friends, things had become so desperate. This was the last meal this crate there was going to have for her and her son were going to eat the last meal and they were going to die of starvation. But God had everything in control. Let's, 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 so let me get a wee drink, folks, because my mouth's terribly dry at the moment. Now, and she said, as the Lord God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Fear not. Friend, you're facing a wall. You don't know what to do. Fear not. Friend, Something's happened in your life and it's devastated you and you don't know what to do and you don't understand it. Fear not. Friend, you're in a, you're in a desolate, dry place at the moment and you think God has forgotten about you. He hasn't forgotten about you. Fear not. Fear not. He hasn't forgotten about you, friend. He hasn't. And I say that to every child of God, no matter where they are and what state they're in, whether good or bad, fear not. Fear not. That's what Elijah says to the wee widow. Fear not. Now, will you hear what he tells her to do? Go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Hallelujah. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel. The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord Sendeth rain upon the earth. Absolutely amazing. Do you know what you know what I'm gonna say here? And I suppose I'm being a bit sarcastic. If Baal was such a wonderful God and Baal was the fertility God, why was why 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 was there no rain? Why was there no rain? I'll tell you why there was no rain. 
because it had been stopped in judgment. That's why. So it showed that Christ, Jehovah, was the true God. Baal couldn't bring the rain. If he was such a great God, where is the rain? There was no rain because God had stopped it. So we look on here and we see that, uh, and she went and did according uh, unto the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Friends, you know something? Jehovah, Jehovah, not Baal, controlled the weather. Jehovah controlled the weather, brother and sisters. The same way he controls everything. He's got it all in control. He used to sing that song uh, a long time ago. He put that great assurance way down in my soul. He's got it all in control. And friend, you may be, get, you may be getting it tough. And you trust me, I know what that feels like. Friend, cling to him. He's your rock. He's your very present help in time of trouble. He's the one that sticketh closer than a brother. Friend, he loves you. He knows you. You know him. But I want to ask a question here. You know God. But does God know you? Are you a born again spirit filled child of God? Or are you just religious? Are you one of these people who say, and I've heard it many times. Oh, I don't agree with that born again stuff. No, I go to church. I'm all right. Friends, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And in fact, Christ said it twice. The second time he said it to Nicodemus, he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So you cannot enter it and you cannot see it unless you're born again of the spirit of the living God. So, uh, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which was spoke, which he spake by Elijah. Now, here we come to the, what is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Everything's going well. You, you know, Elijah's getting built up here. Elijah's getting built up. He was getting built up at Cherith. He's getting built up here. Even in, in Zarephath, even in the in the, the, the territory of, of the Gentiles, God's building them up for the showdown at Mount Carmel. But something terrible happens. Let's see. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. He died. Now. Again, I spent a bit of time looking at some, some stuff that theologians wrote. There are theologians who said he didn't die. He was just in an unconscious state. Friends, read this and read it properly. Read it with your eyes. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you. Listen, the young lad died. He was dead. Now listen to this. Listen to this. There was no left breath left in him. Ah, the wee mummy. I keep thinking of the wee mummy. So I do. what would the wee mummy think? Like there's, you know, everything's going well. The wee lad takes sick and he dies. Now, let's see what happens. And she said unto Elijah, what have I to do with thee? Or, you know, what have I to do with you? What have I to do with you? Uh, uh, what have I to do with you? O thou man of God, art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance? What she's doing there is saying, have you come to my house as a prophet to call my sins to remembrance to kill my child? That's what she was saying. Have you as a prophet come to kill my child because of my, my sin? That's what she was saying to the prophet Elijah. Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? Now, listen carefully. And he said unto her, and this just, Friends, I love I love the Lord. I love the Lord with all of my heart. See, when I read stuff like this, it blesses, touches. If it doesn't touch me, it's not going to touch you. Uh, no, if the Holy Spirit doesn't through me speak and it touches me and then I preach it and it touches you, friends, that's what it's all about. If it doesn't touch me, it won't touch you. And this touched me. This touched me. Because I was trying to picture in my mind what this would look like. 
the wee mommy, the sun's laying dead in her, her wee, the wee mommy's in despair. But it's not over yet. It's not over yet. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him up, and he took him out, I beg your pardon, of, his, of her bosom, and carried him up to the loft. Now I'll just explain to you there. In some of these these houses over Palestine direction and all that there, that they would have had a guest room. And the guest room was upstairs. It was like what we would call the day an attic floor, basically. And that's what they had. So Elijah was staying up there. So he took the wee boy in his arms and he brought him up to where he was staying. Okay, just to let you know that. And and he took their front and he says, Give me thy son. He took him out of her bosom and carried him up to the loft where he abode. Now, do you hear this here? Here we see the heart of Elijah. Here we see the heart of Elijah. I took the son up and he cried out and, and, and he laid him upon his own bed. So he takes the child and he lays the child on the bed that he lies in at night. Right? Now, and he cried unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? Elijah's calling from the bottom of his heart, O oh Lord, this woman has looked after me. She's fed me. She's sustained me. O oh Lord, her child has died. His ch her child, I can see Elijah crying on to God. From the bottom of his heart. Here we see the Elijah in, in the, the light of what he is. A true prophet of God. A man with a pastoral heart for the people. And he cries on to God. Oh Lord, this woman's looked after me. Is her son going to die? And here's what God says. And here he instructs him. And he, now, I want you to listen to this very carefully how he does this. And I'm going to repeat that. That's verse 20. And he cried on to the Lord and said, Oh Lord. My God, has thou also brought evil upon the widow uh, with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? Now listen this. Listen this. This is unbelievable. And he stretched himself upon the child three times. You might say to yourself, what in the name of goodness was that all about? I'll tell you what it was all about. He, wa he was an absolute faith. This child is coming back to life. God's going to bring this child to life. And he laid himself over under the power of God. And he prayed three times. Listen. And he stretched himself upon, upon the child three times. And cried unto the Lord. And said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. He was crying unto God for this young boy. And listen to this. Oh, listen to this. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. How in the name of goodness can some of these theologians say that he was just unconscious? That clearly tells me he was dead, and God, by the power of the Holy Spirit through Elijah, brought this young boy back to life. The life returned to him. And he breathed. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house. And I love this. This made me emotional earlier, I'll be honest with you. He brought him down and he gave him to his mama. He gave him to his mama. When he walked up those stairs, that child was dead. That mother was, I'm sure that mother was in tears and she was screeching as any mother would. And the prophet, this prophet who God is building up and building up, takes this child and cries unto God. And he walks down the stairs with the child alive and hands him to his mummy. And we're told, uh, and, he's, uh, and the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and, and the soul of the child came, came unto him again and he revived. Verse 23, and Elijah took the child and brought him down out of, his, out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. What a testimony of the power of God. 
What a testimony. Bail couldn't bring him back to life. Nothing like that could bring him back. Dagon couldn't have brought him back to life. But Jehovah brought him back to life. Jehovah brought him back to life. That was the miracle. These, this miracle happened again to build Elijah to what we're going to talk about in my next wee study on this. And that's Mount Carmel. That's Mount Carmel, friends. And we're going to, I'm going to show you how powerful God is. I'm going to show you that the only true and living God is the Lord Jesus Christ, the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of the Bible is the only true God. And you're going to see that when I talk to you about the big showdown. And that's what I'm calling it, the showdown. That's a, that's a title. I'll give it a title. Why not? The showdown at Mount Carmel. Who's going to be the God? Is it going to be Baal? Or is it going to be Jehovah? Who's it going to be? Is it going to be God? Or is it going to be Baal? I, uh, and friends, I'll just read this scripture. Elijah took the child and gave it to his mother. I, and now, really hear what the woman said. This, this is also why I believe. Sorry, I seem to be leaning over here. Sorry. Um, and the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul came to the child, took him down. Verse 24. And the woman said unto Elijah, Now remember, I, I am convinced this woman did not uh, worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No, I don't believe she did. And here's what she says. Here's what she says. When you hear this. I know thou art a man of God and not the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Praise God. Friends, this is a wonderful story. But do you know something? We're living in the day of grace. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. Does that not excite you to get busy for the master? Friends, and I'm not going to tear away from this on to something totally different. Friends, we are living in the last of the last of the last days. What on the name of God are you doing for the kingdom? Because that's what's going to count. Because you're going to stand as a believer before the Bema and everything that you've done in this life is going to be burnt up. And only the things that you've done for the kingdom will remain. Oh, in these days, get busy for the kingdom. Do whatever you have to do. Do what God has called you to do. If God has called you to do something, do it. Don't sit about. Do it. Time is short. Believe me, prophecy is my favourite subject. I've studied it from when I was about 14 and a half years of age. I was took to meetings all over this province and listened to lectures by fantastic men who knew the truth, who knew the scriptures. And I learned the prophecy stuff there. And friends, I honestly, honestly did, I honestly did not in my inside as a, as a boy, I thought I'll never see the Lord's return. Well, if God doesn't take me, I honestly believe the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back and, 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 he, and look, there's going to be a lot of people alive listening and watching this podcast and you're going to see it. That's how soon I believe it is. It's coming fast. The days are getting more evil and wicked and laws are being passed. Look, look, God has given me a message. I'm trembling to bring it. I'll be quite honest with you. It's none to do with Elijah. And I'm going to work on it when, when I get Elijah finished. I'm scared to preach it. I'm scared to preach it. Why are you scared to preach it? Because it's so serious. It's so serious. And I'll give you some sort of an insight to it. How can God bless a nation that has legalized abortion? The murder of the innocent. How can God bless a nation who has made same-sex marriage lawful? How can God bless a nation that doctors give hormone replacement tablets to 10-year-olds because a girl feels a 10 that she should be a man? Friends, the evil in this world is terrible and it's going to get worse. And friends, people are going to fall by the wayside and people that you thought were saved are going to fall by the wayside. This is a time of trial and it's only the beginning, friends. And look, keep your faith sure unto Christ. 
and you'll get through this. You'll get through this. Now it's not going to be easy. But friends, who do we have inside us? The Holy Spirit. Who do we say that never leave us or forsake us? The Lord Jesus Christ. I will never leave thee. Excuse me. My mouth's just really dry today. Who said I'd never leave you or forsake you? Who said cast your burden on me? Who said, who said they, about, they hate you because they hated me first? Who said you'll, you'll have tribulations? Or in other words, it reads in the Greek, you'll have trials. But fear not, for I have overcome the world. Friends, we have the Master, we have the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we cling to him, and we need to be study. We need to be studying God's word in these days. We need to be busy, as I said, in these days, doing things for the Master, because time's short, and He's coming back soon. And look, friends, I don't know about you, but I want to be busy when He's coming back. I don't want to be sitting idle. And many Christians are, and have sat idle for years, for years. I've heard people say on platforms and, and talking to people in conversation, oh, I'm 50 years, I'm 60 years on the road. They're 60 years in the road. They've done absolutely nothing for the kingdom of God. My friends that are listening to this, get busy for the kingdom. Because friends, if you're a child of God, you're going to stand before the bema. And look, I'm going to say this to the ungodly. Just a wee message to the ungodly. Get right with God. He's coming back soon, friend. And you stand before the great white throne and he will say to you, what did you do with my son, the Lord Jesus? And you will be in the lake of fire for eternity. I've heard people say, oh, you're one of these old-fashioned preachers. Turn and burn. No. Turn and live. Turn and live. I want eternal life in the kingdom. Friends, that's where I want it, not in the lake of fire. Eternal torment. You think about that. Eternal. Never ending. Now is the day of salvation. Now's the time, friend. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. Nobody's guaranteed their next breath. Nobody. And I can, I can promise you that. Oh, nobody's guaranteed. You're not guaranteed your next breath. You can say to someone, I'll talk to you tomorrow. You can't promise that. You can't promise that because you can be snatched out of this life like that. Because God's word says uh, there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. And when your ticket's to be stamped, my friend, that's when you'll go and you need to be ready. You need to be ready. You need to be saved, born again. Not I'm not talking about religiosity. I'm not talking about putting your nice fancy suit on and lifting your Bible and going to church and hallelujah and you come home and you set the Bible down and you don't sit think a single thing about the Lord the next Sunday. My friend, that is nothing but religiosity and friends, it's damned millions to hell and it's going to damn you to hell if you don't get changed. I have a personal relationship with Jesus. He is my Lord and he is my saviour. Now I've heard people say, oh he's my Lord, he's my Lord, but the Saviour bit. Friends, if you're truly saved, he's your Lord and he's your Saviour. And I'm proud to sit here in this study and tell you, he is my Lord and he is my Saviour. He is my sustainer, he is my helpmate, he is my friend, he sticks closer than a brother. He is right inside me, he knows my most intricate details and he loves me. He took the sinner and saved him, delivered him from seven years of drug addiction, delivered me from it. To God be the glory, he broke it. He broke it. Everything else that tried, no. God broke it. And praise God, that was in 2007, long time ago. And you know, friends, has it, Kyle, has it been easy? No, but look, the Christian walk's not easy. And I'm going to say this, and I don't want to be took up the wrong way. When I do say this, look, Christianity isn't for cream puffs. Now, let me hear me carefully now. Cream puffs. Friend, it's not easy, but Christ said it wouldn't be. But you know what he did say? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And that's good enough for me. Sorry, I went off on one there. My apologies. So, next, 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 next study, the great showdown. The great showdown, okay? The Great Showdown on Mount Carmel. And we'll get a look at that. And we'll see how it goes. God bless you. If you've tuned in live, God bless you. If you're watching it later on, God bless you.
and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be bringing this message to you soon. God bless.